Hi guys, this is the advisor and welcome back to my channel. Now, I am sure that virtually every man and his dog living in Jamaica and probably everybody overseas has heard of the incident at the Freeport lockup station in Montego Bay. Everybody seemed to have a take on it and everybody seemed to have, uh, have already formed their own conclusion based on what they have heard. But... I think I have a little more inside information that I am able to offer on this topic. I was late in carrying it out because I got this news from Sunday morning. But I wanted to dot a few I's and cross a few T's because I am not about meeting quantity time and meeting deadlines. I'm about carrying the facts as close as possible so I'll take whatever time is necessary to gather information and putting out a proper video from which people can learn. Yes man, that's what the advisor channel is about. Quality. What I hear is that there was a commotion inside the lockup where some prisoners were fighting. Yeah, that about six prisoners they were fighting and it was getting so bad that the officers who were on duty at the lockup decided to go around there to find out what was happening. So what happened was that as we as people may know or may not know, there is a sterile section in the lockup where prisoners are not allowed. Only the policeman goes to that section at the entrance. First of all, I also need to point out that there are no firearms allowed in the lockup. Not even in the sterile area, much less in the cell block proper. I hear that there was a ship change at about 6 o'clock that Saturday evening and a new set of men had come on board. The person who was coming off duty, one of the persons, one of the, sole, one of the policemen who was coming off duty was Corporal Beckford, who was in charge of that shift. The shift that was coming off. Now, after going and getting his, changing his clothes and all of that, I hear that he had forgotten something round by the lockup. And he went back for it. But at this time, he had actually picked up a firearm. And because he had only intended to go back round to the cell block for maybe a minute or two to just pick up whatever he left there, he didn't see the need to go really leave the firearm back at this with the station guard or put it back in the um, armory or in the safe or anything. He just went around there. But when he went there, there was a commotion. There was a big, really seemed to be a riot happening inside the cell block proper. Three of the policemen were down there trying to quell whatever uh, was happening down there. And of course, as a policeman, seeing that he was already there and seeing even though he was off duty proper, in that sense, although a policeman is never off duty, he did the correct thing by trying to render assistance. So what he did, he had his firearm on him, but he was in the sterile area of the cell, of, of the lockup, where no prisoners are ever allowed. Except, of course, when, when they are coming in to be processed to go down on the cell block, or when they are leaving and are processing to go out of the lockups. So being there at the time and being armed, what he did Instead of just taking up what he came for and head out and a Kirwagwan, he decided to stash the firearm under a desk and simply go in there and see if he can render assistance to his fellow policemen. Because at this stage, and with what he saw going on, his first, his, they, he had two priorities here who, that had to be met like immediately. He needed, he knew he couldn't take the firearm inside of the cell block 
proper. And there was no point of him going back round, all the way around to the um, reception area of the police station, handing the firearm to the station guard and then go back way around to the cell block because him, him, his police colleagues could be dead or the situation could have gotten so much worse in that space of time. So what he had to do was to just touch the firearm to ensure that it does not reach on the cell block itself and then go down there and see what assistance he could render. In that specific moment, he needed quick thinking. He had to think fast and act immediately. And this was, as far as I'm concerned, the best um, combination between safety and protocol. When he went down there, he actually helped to calm the situation down. And when the situation was actually gotten to a stage where they could figure out what was happening, they realized that one prisoner had stabbed up another prisoner. So three policemen were left to um, continue um, dealing with the situation while one of the policemen took the... Um, wounded prisoner out into the sterile area to keep him out of the lockup so that he wouldn't get further injury because at this point it was necessary that he be taken out of any danger one and two they had to try to seek medical attention for him like immediately what they thought was that the man was somehow too injured to act because when they took him out there, he just lay down on the floor, gasping for breath. So they thought he was extremely subdued. Rem bear in mind, now, you know, the prisoner, the, the policeman who escorted the prisoner out of the cell block, he did not know that there was a firearm stashed under the desk. But the wounded prisoner, lying on the floor, saw the firearm. And who don't know that when them gun boy they see gun, them can catch fire. Because at this time you have got to understand, you know, that Carpal Beckford, who carried the firearm in there, who was the shift who was on the shift previously. Uh, regulation number 21600, Carpal K. Beckford. He was still in the cell block taking command, trying to take command of the situation and see if he can deal with it. As best he could. At that point, he didn't even remember that he left a gun out there. Because right now, the immediate, his immediate concern was quelling the situation and getting things back totally under full control. So, as I say now, the prisoner see the gun, take it up, and decide to say, listen, the man who just injured me, me, I go kill him, I go kill him, no regardless of the consequences. So, I'm take up the gun. And he forced the, the, the policeman who was escorting him, who had escorted him out of danger, forced him to open up the cell block. And of course, you are a policeman. You don't, because there's the only one gun on the entire, in the entire lockup area now, you know. They forced him to open up the cell block itself. And the prison, of, of course, the policeman walked it. And him escort this policeman down for the rest and find the man where he want that injured him and start lick shot after him, name up shot after him. I don't think in all honesty that this man, okay, this man, what we are talking about here, named Christopher Campbell, also known as Bigfoot, dirty gun boy from long time. He come from Magatti in St. Elizabeth. And a 35 year old, you know, born in a 1989. Bear in mind that this old father was charged for two, count, two separate counts of murder and three separate counts of illegal possession of firearm. So I don't know, good up, good up boy. But at the same time, you know, his intention wasn't to shoot police. Him just want the man to tab him up. While the man in there fire shot, you know, one of the policemen wrestled him. Grab on pan him and wrestle him because they realized that he, 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 he wasn't there to kill police. Him they just want to get the one man who 
stab him up. You understand? So in the melee, the gun pitch out and it pitch out toward the sterile section and show the grill. And I hear that there was a female police officer there. And she was in the sterile area because as you all know, there are female police female prisoners in lockups so there will always be at least two female guards police there to guard and look after female prisoners so when she saw the gun come towards fairfoot because she heard the commotion and she come out into that section when she saw the gun come at her feet she freeze she freeze she didn't know what on earth to do she just froze i heard that she just turned up looking bewildered eyes wide didn't know what to do it was another policeman now who run and pick up the gun and point it at the prisoner and say listen turn up where you're there because if you move and that's how the situation was quelled in the aftermath of all this here is what is likely to happen here, here is what happened and here's what's likely to happen corporal beckford he is more like, most likely to be placed on interdiction or at least on sus suspension and there will be a hearing into why and the circumstances under which he carried a firearm into the lockups. The man who was shot, the constable who was shot, Constable D. Sinclair, regulation number 28800, regulation number 22800, he, of course, will have to be placed on sick leave. I don't think there will be any possibility of charges against him. I, I don't know the internal circumstances. Now, Matthew Reed is the one who did, did the stabbing inside the lockup. And I hear that he will be charged with assault occasioning grievous bodily harm. And this guy, Matthew Reed, he is 28 years old and he is also known as Shatty Mark. And from you hear somebody named Shatty Mark, you don't have to ask about that. No nice little church choir boy is going to name Shatty Mark. And I hear that he's from Lilliput in St. James. As for Christopher Campbell, Bigfoot, the one who take the policeman gun and shoot Shatty Mark and shoot um, the policeman in his hand, He'll be charged with assault occasioning actual bodily harm, assault at common law, wounding with intent, two counts of wounding with intent, and discharging of a firearm and injury shooting. Uh, the most serious charge among these, you know, is the wounding with intent. And for those who don't understand police terms or legal terms, wounding with intent is an extreme, is even worse than assault occasioning actual bodily harm or grievous, grievous bodily harm because wounding with intent actually means wounding with intent to kill in the united states this charge would work out as attempted murder in other words wounding with intent in jamaica is equivalent to attempted murder in the united states the sad part about all of this is that Matthew Reed, alias Shatty Mark, he or his family will likely be able to sue the government. But I hope that doesn't work out. But that is something that is likely to happen. And therefore, I'll say nothing further than that. More than if him try to sue the government, he needs to get a visit at 2 a.m. by some police and make sure that that legal procedure stop right there. So, if this be the case, then I can say that boy, this policeman have a good case in keeping his job, and even when he face charges, he has a lot of mitigating circumstances, if that is how it happened. Guys, thank you for visiting my channel. I do really, really appreciate it. Please give it a like, and please subscribe if you have not subscribed yet and tell your friends about the channel please leave a comment below so i know what you think and i look forward to seeing you in my next video